Today, I'm actually going to do a bit of work for a change. My goal today is to install this Humidex that you can see behind me. And the purpose of this thing is to vent moist, musty, old, damp, mouldy air out of the basement and chuck it outside. The challenge with this thing is that it's way too long and I have to cut one of these pieces down to size because the basement down there has really only got like a seven foot ceiling height. So I'm gonna take this back section off and cut a few inches off it just to make a nice clean fit. So how this thing is supposed to work is, this is the bottom of it. So this piece here is supposed to be about three inches from the floor. So it sucks air through this grate. The air is supposed to go up through here. The, the fan mechanism is hidden in there. And then it blows that musty air out through this elbow into this guy, this pipe here, and this is what goes through the wall. And usually most people put these through a rim joist just above your basement floor, and that just chucks the air straight into this kind of funky grill looking type situation. And that, that's it, you're supposed to be good, your air is going out. But I am not gonna do that because I've got an old window that I've boarded up, and that's what I'm gonna cut the hole through. So let me just show you that. Now, do you remember that janky old window that had the uh, pipes going through it from the old dirty old oil tank? Well, that's gone. The, the whole thing's gone. And now I've boarded this up with a piece of cheap old plywood. So I'm going to cut a six and a quarter inch hole in that. And that vent is going to come out here and get all of that moist air. But in the, in the manual, in the instructions, it was saying that really I should use pressure treated lumber just to protect this from the weather but you know what I'm going to do I don't have any pressure treated lumber and I can't be asked going into town so what I'm going to do is I'm going to protect this with this sheet of tin I'm assuming it's aluminium or aluminum whichever is the correct spelling and what I'm going to try and do is bend the edges so that this is all just one piece and not only does it cover that but it also covers these old sills which they're not rotten but they're definitely very weathered so my thinking is that I will put that aluminium piece on first so that the plywood and that aluminium are all one piece and then I'll drill the six and a quarter inch hole for this thing to go through. All right, I've had to give up any hope of the two side edges of this piece being nice and clean because it's come from the hardware store quite badly cut. Let me show you this edge. So that's definitely not a straight edge but the the sides here which is basically the length of the roll those are straight so i'm just gonna have to accept that these are going to be the only nice looking edges on this piece so accepting that <laughs> these edges here are a little bit janky what i've done is I've, I've marked a very straight line here at three inches then i'm going to do another one at 30 inches and then that will give me another three inches what I'm going to do then is bend these out this way. So this one will be bent out that way. And then this whole thing should sit in that window cavity. And the guys at the store told me that all I really need to do to create this bend is to just kind of gently score this line with a, with a craft knife or something like that. And that should be enough to allow me to bend it we shall see. I've never done this before, so I might mess this up. So I'm going to be quite tentative on the first little score because I don't want to overdo it and then it just falls off. Right, so I've got my set square. I've got my line there. I'm just going to use this little knife here to just gently score a line across that. Well, it's bending, so I'm bending it the wrong way though. So let's flip this over and then bend it the opposite direction. Oh, oh that's not bad. I'm sure there's a proper tool for this job. Maybe I should, maybe I should utilize this. Oh, there we go. Now I'm probably supposed to make some kind of allowance for the radius of this bend, but I don't know what that radius is, especially when I'm doing such a shabby job of bending it so what i'm going to do is make the bend first and then measure that 30 inches from there so everything's a learning experience isn't it so on this one i'm going to go a little bit more gentle just just a really light slice 
as I feel like that last one was a little bit aggressive. Maybe I'll do another one. I'm sure someone's watching this. That's not how you do it, Gavin. No, you, you've got to do it with a special tool and you've got to give it all you've got. I don't know. I'm just, I'm just making it up as I go along. One more. One more. Oh, just watch. I've probably overdone it now. Someone's getting really upset somewhere, I'm sure. Right, so let's bend this bugger out now. I don't know what I'm doing. Who said I knew what I was doing? So now I've got my U-shaped piece of metal. So I'm gonna cut along this edge with some clippers and this edge here, and then I'll score another line here, and then this bit will flap up like that, and that will be the windowsill. And my idea is that I'll bend these here and tuck these underneath that sill and put this flap on the top. Now, I really would appreciate it if you didn't look too closely at that line I drew there. That didn't look very good. And so after some absolutely inspirational uh, craftsmanship and skill, uh, you can see I've got this. It's almost like a work of art in itself, really, let's be honest. And that is hopefully, that's basically my sill and this will block the window and these will be my side walls. So uh, it's, <laughs> it's, it's interesting. So I've just done a, a first dry fit of it and it's surprisingly not that terrible. Let me show you. So these are the side walls that I was hoping to get lapping around that, but obviously it's too small. Uh, but I've got plenty of extra on this sill to cover that. So all I'm gonna do now, I feel, is I don't, I don't like that radius there. I need a much tighter radius. So I'm gonna tighten that up so it's a more snug fit on uh, both of these sides. Oh, hello, spider. You don't wanna be in there, mate. And then once that's done, I'll probably take it off and I might just cork all around these edges before I nail it in with these little white aluminium nails that I bought. Oh, look at that. That's way better. Look at that crisp edge there. So that's my radius now, lovely and tight. And the same on this side here. That's exactly what I wanted. Right, it's 24 hours later. And the reason why I had to uh, stop and start again is uh, I need to put some cork on that piece of flashing and uh, I left the corking gun at the uh, camper. So anyway, it's the next day. I've got my uh, cork gun and my Chemtron adhesive slash sealant. Uh, do you want to put it on for me? Yeah. Yeah, you're going to do it? Yeah. All right then. I've never done it before, but I just squeezed this, right? You've got to cut the top off first so oh. that it comes out. I don't, I don't think your teeth are going to do that. We have scissors. Yeah, we've got some skizers. So we'll cut the, cut the end of that off and go and squirt some uh, goo. <laughs> I know what you're thinking. There's nothing quite like watching a master craftsman at work. I mean, just look at the skill level. Before you know it, I'll be making violins. Well, I think that's it. So now I'm just going to use some of these little white aluminium supposedly weatherproof nails just to get a nice tight fit. You do realise that uh, you're watching someone hammering nails. I mean that's just how you've chosen to spend your time and who am I to judge but uh, you might as well just hit that subscribe button. Oh and be sure to hit that bell icon so that you never miss an episode. So now I want to bend this over here. I should have scored this first with a craft knife, but I, I didn't think about it. it. It does not look pretty. So it's, it's in place and uh, as you can see, it is an absolutely exquisite piece of craftsmanship there. Good job. Yeah. I didn't know you were so good at this. Yeah, didn't you? It's, I can't uh, wait to see the church. You're amazed, aren't you? Yeah. The reason why I can deal with this being a little bit janky is because one day I'm going to reside the whole house, repaint the foundation and I expect all this will get replaced. Actually, before I drill the hole, I just better cut this thing down to the right size first, because if I can't cut it, well, 
it's not getting installed so that has to be done first so uh, this is the test piece that I'm going to work with this is kind of the back of it and I bought those uh, those cutters that you saw me using those scissors on that thin aluminium which is way thinner than this this is at least double the thickness so I don't know if it's going to work but I need to cut 11 and a half inches off this and then 11 and a half inches off the top of this piece here so wish me luck that it'll actually cut through it I need some muscle for this job do you want to do you want to cut this for me yes I do yeah all right I'll, I'll mark the line for you that is another example of uh, masterful craftsmanship that's what I should have called this this channel isn't it masterful craftsman or something yeah 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 <laughs> right I just discovered a, a neat little trick just instead of cutting it you just rip it so have a look at this watch this so get down there love so that's my line and I cut, I cut down to here and then I figured I'd just put some pressure on it and now it's it just look at that perfect cut let's keep, let's keep going I tell you what I've been eating my spinach and really pumping those five pound dumbbells I'm almost at four reps I know it's unbelievable really inspirational now I'll just cut that last bit right after much faffing about and a few cuts a bit of swearing <laughs> not by me I didn't do the swearing it was Amanda um, we've got it together we finally got the two halves the bottom half was cut and then we've slotted it into the top half and screwed it in what a faff but we finally got it and I think it's perfectly measured do you want to just check with the tape measure make sure it's 67 inches love is that what you're after yeah hang on. Sixty-seven. You're a sixteenth out. Too long or too too short. I think it's in your favor. Yeah, I meant to do that. That was like you know, like just give it a little bit extra just in case, you know. So, so it's perfect. Let's uh, let's take it downstairs and get it installed. So basically, as you can see, this whole unit is supposed to sit on the wall like this. And you've got to make sure that there's a three inch gap at the bottom which is exactly what i did and that's why it needs to be 67 inches and then once you've cut this hole for this vent in this wall usually it will go through a rim joist but because i got this boarded up window i figured that would be a cleaner job and i don't really want to drill a six inch hole in a the structure of my house if i don't have to once i've got that hole drilled you flip this thing round basically you just screw it into the wall you just bolt it onto the wall making sure you got that three inch gap and it vents out that space there and you use this to uh, fill that gap but that's going to give me like a, a gap where this reaches through might be like a, a three inch gap so i'm going to fill that gap with this insulation now i've got this piece of crappy board <laughs> For free from the local hardware store because it's plenty big enough for me to get two sections big enough to fill that space and basically create some insulation for for this pipe uh, i don't really know if it needs it i don't think it's going to condensate on the outside but you never know i figured it's best just to fill that space with a bit of insulation with this rigid foam and then you don't have this weird looking gap let's drill this hole now before i can drill this hole cleanly there's still a little bit of glass there that needs to come out and uh, I, I love smashing glass with the hammer I really do but I just figured you'd enjoy doing that love I thought maybe you'd enjoy smashing some glass I would yeah do you want to do it yeah um I see that you're wearing appropriate footwear though so I don't know if you should be I want to do it all right well let's put some safety goggles on at least because you know <laughs> safety first and all that YouTube will get we'll get in all kinds of shit if you don't put some specs on. And somehow it was me that ended up doing the deed, as usual. Now, whenever you're doing this kind of work uh, with glass, sharp objects, you know, all kinds of things can land on your feet. It's absolutely vital that you wear appropriate footwear. Right on my foot. 
Okay, so by factoring in the angle of the sun, the age of the building, using a little bit of witchcraft and a tad of hocus pocus, I figured that this is where my hole's gonna be. So I had to buy this. Now this is something you need to know. If you're gonna buy one of these Humidex units, the tool that you absolutely have to have is a six and a quarter inch hole saw. So I tried to find, uh, it, doesn't, it doesn't come with the hu Humidex, of course, it's not included. You know, so you can't actually install it without that tool. Well, I guess you could get a jigsaw and cut a hole for, who wants to do that? But uh, this tool, this six and a quarter inch uh, hole saw, you can't buy it at any kind of hardware store like Home Depot or anything like that because it's six and a quarter. So I emailed the people that do Humidex and said, where the hell do I get this thing? And they sent me a link to Amazon. So just know if you buy one of these, you'll be spending another $30, $40 on this tool. Anyway, so that's where I'm gonna have my hole. So I'm just pushing this against this piece of wood a little bit, just to make a mark where the drill is gonna go for my little guide hole. So now I'm gonna attach a, I think it's a quarter inch drill bit. I'm gonna drill a small hole through this piece of wood, which will come out the other side and it'll come out the other side through that white aluminium. And then I'm gonna go onto the outside with this tool. And because I've already cut that little guide hole, I'll put this in that little guide hole, put a lot of pressure on. And I really hope this cuts through that white aluminium and then through this. And that should be my hole to vent this thing. And then once I've done that, then I'm just gonna cut these bits of insulation and do a little bit of jiggery pokery to create the hole to match up to that. That doesn't have to be very accurate. It doesn't have to look all that pretty. I think I'm probably overdoing it with that. So, uh, right, I'll just switch this out for a quarter inch drill bit. So I'm going to try this tool for the first time. I've never actually used this hole saw. If I was a professional, I would have probably just tested it out on a piece of scrap wood first, but you know, it's me. I think that's supposed to happen. Just screw it back on there. Oh, safety glasses. I can't get it in the hole. I just I can't. <laughs> <laughs> I can't get it in. Okay, let's just guide it in. Let's just guide it in like that. Okay, I think it's in the hole. Right, ready? I'll just move my foot in case that thing falls off again. Because that'd be terrible. Well, after all of that, it really only took a couple of minutes. Now, as you can see, I've cut a perfect hole in that plywood. And now it's ready for the vent to go outside to- Oh, shit! Oh. Sorry, I didn't mean to blaspheme there, being in a church and all that business. You little bugger. Now, can you put that vent thing in for me so we can show them what that does? So that's the vent. As you can see, the vents kind of, they flap open with the breeze and they're angled down. And this lovely dangler will connect up to that and hopefully vent this moist, damp air outside. All right, so I've got this thing loosely in place. Now I'm just drilling holes in the walls to put these plugs in so that I can then screw the unit to the wall. But I just want to get all that done while I've still got a bit of movement. And then once that's screwed to the wall, then I'm going to fix this to the, to the vent here, which will be on the other side of this wall here. And then I've got my piece of uh, insulation cut. So I'm gonna put that in between these two, but I just wanna drill these holes, get this thing fixed in place. I can't wait till I can plug this thing in and... Oh, I should have done that, shouldn't I? I should have, I should have plugged this in and tested it just to make sure the whole thing ran before, before installing it. <laughs> uh... Note to future self, anything that you purchase, just make sure it works before you spend a full day installing it so i've marked my holes on the wall i'm just gonna drill them with my concrete bit it's got my safety specs on it's always good uh, to put a battery on your drill first meant to do that right so i've got this really high-end beautiful deluxe piece of uh, insulation just not really doing anything <laughs> Uh, in between this unit and 
the window and now I'm just screwing the Humidex to the concrete wall. I'll tighten these by hand as I don't want them to be overly tight. Now I must have messed my measurements up because as you can see this is way more than three inches. So the bottom of this is supposed to be no more than three inches from the floor. So if I just remove all that now, I'm pretty sure that's that's close to six. So what I'm going to have to do is loosen this because this is screwed to this and you do have some adjustments. So I'm just going to have to unscrew it, drop it till it's got three inches and then just re-screw it. So that's no, no big problem. So it's just a minor adjustment. But for now, I just want to see this thing work. So I've, uh, I've placed this vent inside of the pipe, that flex pipe that comes out. And through the ancient skill of measuring the distance from the moon to Stonehenge, and then multiplying that by happiness, I've determined that this is where I place my first screw. You know, I don't really use uh, tape measure that much. You know, it's just, uh, it's just by eye. Okay, that was just a test to see if you guys noticed that I was just trying to screw it instead of drill a hole. So now I'm actually going to drill a hole. So post a comment, let me know if you noticed that deliberate mistake. Now I'm ready for the screwdriver. Not too tight. There we go. Oh, that's, that is as good as, as if I'd measured it. You know, a true craftsman just does it by eye, you know. Does it work? I'm gonna plug this thing in. Can you hear that? That's the Humidex running. We finally got it installed. Look at this business. Now this video was not sponsored by Humidex. In fact, I paid almost a grand for this thing. And that's a lot of books I had to sell. So uh, did you buy your copy of my book yet? There's a link in the description. So it's the day after the day after and the Humidex has been running all night at full blast. And it's too early to see if it's it's actually got rid of any moisture. I think it's going to take days to see any kind of improvement. But what I need to do before I can call this job completely done is just drop this bottom section. So if you look at this, the instructions say that this part here has to be no more than three inches from the ground. So this, these two planks of wood mark my three inches. So I'm just going to unscrew this piece from the side, drop it and then re-screw it so that it's fixed in place and that will give me my perfect three inch gap that's supposed to make all the difference. I can't really see it making all that difference but that's what the instructions say and that is what I'll do. And then while it's off the wall I'm just going to seal up any little gaps on the back of this thing, those aluminium plates that seal it all up but don't really seal it up. I've got some of that sticky aluminium tape so I'm going to just close all gaps to make sure that it's as airtight as it can be and that way as it's sucking that moist air up none of it gets to leak out into the concrete wall it should all go up the unit and out through that vent okay so i've now dropped this bottom piece perfectly down to just a three inch gap so let's get rid of these piece of timber That is now my three inches off the floor. Now I'm going to take it completely off the wall again, just one last time so that I can tape up the back and make sure there's absolutely zero gaps for all that moist air to escape back in to the basement. All right, so I've taped up the back with the very, very sticky aluminum, well, aluminum tape. That's where the manual suggested you do it at that seam. But I also thought I'd do one up here as well because there's a little bit of a gap so I've just put a piece on that as well. Who knows if it makes any difference, but might as well do it while I'm in here. Okay, it's back on the wall. That's it. It's finished. It's blowing nicely. Let's go outside and see what's going on with that, that vent. Look at that. It's working. I can really feel that's quite powerful. So, I mean, that's running at full power. 
It's kind of noisy, although once we've got the floor insulated in the basement, we shouldn't hear too much of that upstairs. But I think most of the time, once we've got all of this sort of initial moisture out, I would expect that we'll probably run it on half power. Should be half the noise, I'm hoping. But yeah, seems to be working. Quite happy with that, love. But I guess we won't know for like maybe a week or so if it's truly effective. Got to give it a chance to do its thing and make sure the basement's fully sealed off and there's no doors open. And then hopefully we'll be able to come back here in a week and have a relatively dry basement. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And if you want to know if this thing actually worked, be sure to subscribe and hit that like button.